at a rep I'm at a reptile show in a different state today, one that I've never been to. Dave, what state are we in? Florida. What state it's are we in? The armpit state, Florida. The armpit what? state. <laughs> the armpit state. Do they really call it? Uh, I do. Why? Because it's hot and humid all the time, but it's fun. I mean, I like it. A lot of people don't. So armpits? <laughs> I'm from Minnesota and I'm melting down here. Okay, so let's go look at some animals. What do you say? Let's do it. <laughs> Yeah. We're all filming. This is gonna go viral. Yeah. Everyone's vlogging. Are we all vlogging yet, dog? Raise your hand if you're invited to the build off. Yeah. Wait. I wanted to stop and look at some vendors, and the first table that I'm gonna show you guys is Josh's Frogs. They did set aside some really pretty crested geckos for me. This one caught my eye first. It's a really beautiful red. Nowadays, some of the reds can get kind of muddy, but this one is like really bright red. Pretty little red Dalmatian here. All of their crested geckos, the staff all cares for from day one of hatching. All raised in house. Oh, I like this one a lot. She's pretty. Ooh. And what I think is super cute is all of their geckos. Ah! All of their geckos come with like a little birth certificate. It's super freaking super cute. I go to Florida for a reptile show, and there's tons of crazy stuff here, and I just have to look at more crested geckos. But you guys like them too. <laughs> Josh's Frogs only sells captive bred animals, which is very cool because a lot of reptile shows will have people coming in to buy their very first animal, and captive bred is super important when you're unfamiliar with a species. Look at all these geckos! He's antelope, and then the green one over here is the sand lava. Very pretty. So what's your favorite locality if you had to pick one? Um. I think right now the Sambava, just because of how drastic their color change is. All the green will turn solid yellow. He's super cool. Thank you for getting these out. Absolutely. So you just keep them outside all year long, right? Awesome. If it gets too cold in the winter, I'll bring them in, but yeah, generally. Look at her head marking. Oh, wow. And I like the red eyes on these too. The A-males have red eyes, right? The A-males do. And with the palmettos, there's an undesirable trait called bug eye, which is more predominant in A-males and in males. This is a perfect eyed female with really nice markings. She's very pretty, thank you. My favorite. <laughs> thank you guys. You too. I'm here with Dan the Turtle Man. Hello. I am the turtle man, they yes, say. Yes, he is the turtle man. And we are at a show with lots of turtles. So, would you like to show us some cool turtles? Yes, we will go, uh, I will show them when I find them. And I was thinking you could show them what to look for when they are wanting to purchase a turtle. Yeah, that's important, that's a big one, because there's some breeders, people that just, eh, the animals, especially yeah. babies, they can be unhealthy, but yeah. um, there's some good ones. There's some yeah. good ones here. I'll tell you what to look for. Let's go look. Let's do it. Oh, so cute. What's your favorite? Not your... this, not this dude. Oh, yeah. him. Okay. Sorry, old not him. can't say that. <laughs> I haven't held a baby baby that wasn't a terrapin in a long time. I'm a little excited. So how to spot a healthy turtle. First of all, it sounds kind of straightforward, but you're gonna look at the plastron. Make sure that there's no egg sac or egg yolk, because some people will like take the baby turtles straight out of the egg and try to sell them. If there's an egg tooth, that means that that animal was within two weeks of hatching. I don't think that you can ensure that a turtle is healthy eating and growing two weeks after hatching. It needs to be at least a month or two. This little fella, there's no physical issues. There's no fungus. There's no nothing. We got nice bright eyes. And not only that, one of the best number one ways to find a good healthy turtle at a reptile show is if it shows interest or is actively eating. If it's willing to eat in an environment like this, that is one healthy, strong, robust little creature. <laughs> Want to make sure that they have their strength. There's no nipping from other turtles. Sometimes they'll have little chunks missing out of the back of them. And not only that, but the reason that I'm showing off this particular animal here is because I know this fellow who breeds all these animals. It's better if you know someone 
and if they know what they're talking about and not just trying to make a sale and they're trying to make sure that they get you the right turtle for whatever your habitat is. This little fella is very happy. I mean, not too happy right now, but a very <laughs> healthy little animal. Bright eyed, you know, bushy tailed, if you will, nice and strong, trying to get out of my hand, actively was trying to eat a little bit earlier. This is a good looking little baby turtle, a Washita map turtle. Well, you said that. Yep, it. these guys are cuties. Talk about how you spot a healthy turtle. Look at that. I mean, look at this. It's trying to eat my finger. That's pretty good. The willingness to eat is a big thing. I'm in a state that I've never been to before. What's that smelly smell? Plato. Florida. Do you know anything about snakes? I know that they are reptiles, cold-blooded. Okay. I know that they eat mice usually, okay. and that some of them still have their legs as a vestigial organ. Okay. Wow, um, that is actually a lot of things. I'm college educated. Well, I'm gonna go look at some ball pythons oh, at Bob's right. Balls table. Would you like to look at them too? I'm always down to see someone's balls. Oh, yay! <laughs> Brendan, do you like ball pythons? I do. You wanna look at some with me? Yes. At Bob's Balls? Let's go see Bob's Balls. Let's go see Bob's Balls. Good morning! Good morning! Well, good. Bob, would you like to show us some ball pythons? Yes, let's go look at some snakes. <laughs> hey guys, uh, I'm gonna start off with one of my favorite animals I produced this year. This is a Desert Ghost VPI Azanthic. Oh. So we've only made two of these so far, and this has been pretty much the talk of the show. And uh, let's check it out. He's beautiful. I what do you guys think about this one? So I think it's absolutely beautiful. I don't do snake stuff. I don't do snake morphs. I look at that and I'm like, pretty. pretty. <laughs> I like. What did you say were the genetics on this? So guy? this is Pastel BPI Azanthic Desert okay. Ghost. We gotta go to another crowd favorite. So guys, here we have a leopard voodoo clown. Uh, voodoo is a gene I discovered four years ago, and this is our first time producing clowns out of them. And the voodoo uh, and leopard works together really well and creates a lot of dark spots on it and just a lot of nice flames on this animal. A very aggressive head pattern. Made a very, very cool clown. So are these snakes sold? The voodoo clown is not sold. The VPI Xanthic Desert Ghost is sold, um, but I do have more like that. You have them all listed on your Morph Market? I do. So cool. check me out on Morph Market <laughs> and uh, Instagram. All right, guys, so here we have an Orange Stream Leopard Blackhead Desert Ghost, 66% head clown. So genetically, this animal could be extremely powerful especially if he proves out head clown. A lot of potential down the road. With Desert Ghost, we have that crisp, crisp pattern, and you're adding these darker genes like leopard and blackhead. Tracks out this blacks and uh, really fine lines in it. So what is the desert? The Desert do? Ghost. So the Desert Ghost, yeah. see like most regular <laughs> clowns just look like that. And okay. the Desert Ghost amplifies his genes so much. It just amplifies the clown so much. Wow, that is beautiful snake. So, Bob, what shows will you be at next? I will be at Animal Con with you. Yes! And then we'll be in Arlington, <laughs> Atlanta. Right after that we have Tinley. Tinley! And then St. Louis. Wait, St. Louis is this year? In November. I didn't know. I guess I'm going. Yeah. Okay, so if we'll it's in RBC, in I'll be there. Yeah, we'll see you guys in St. Louis too. I wanted to tell you about Morph Market. Morph Market is the website that connects reptile breeders and keepers from across the world. You can search through over 30,000 different ball pythons and other reptile species, like geckos. You can also look through breeders, local and worldwide, and see their ratings right on the website. See upcoming events and what vendors will be there, and keep track of your very own animals using the Animal Manager. Morph Market is the place to go for everything reptile. A little bit more pickly than Pickled green beans. Mm. Garlic, mm -hmm. anyone? Content. Content. That looks very suspicious. This is incredible. I don't know about this. Pearl. 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 Are you sure? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Isn't it? I told you. Oh, give me that. <laughs> I told you. Mm. Give me that. Oh! Hey kids, Brendan got pickled garlic. Good. This is what we do at a rep house. I see the exact thought process that yeah, you went I'm through. Like, I'm about to eat a huge chunk of garlic. And then it's it tastes like, like garlic, oh. tastes like garlic. Then it tastes like pickle and dill and yummy. Mm -hmm. And crunchy. Nine Texture. out of ten, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. Thank you. 
Yeah. What do you think it is at this point? So it might be a cinnamon. There's a guy over in Spain that's working with them. So we'll breed it and see what happened. It came from an Arctic double head, a sunburst. So a double head sunburst. You've got a top pattern, a couple side patterns on it. You got a belly on it that pretty nice looking. So this is a albino erythritic flame, Eastern Gorder. Flame gene originates from uh, Canada and the northern United States. Most erythritic animals come from the coastal Carolinas, and then you mix them with albino, and you get these shades of yellow, orange, and red. So uh, this is a young adult female. These are the California red sided They're a little spastic. <laughs> She's about to shed. Uh, this is Marin County locale. They're bright blue and red. So this is the Santa Cruz. Uh, these come from a small area in California. They're native to a handful of kinds that I know of and they vary a lot. They can be black, blue on their sides. Uh, some are more of like a green to a gray color. And there's also a tri-stripe variant where they have lateral stripes along with a dorsal. So they are a different species than the Sertalis. They're a little stockier, a little thicker, and then they have smaller litters. Uh, they're a little more aquatic. They, they like to eat tadpoles, frogs, and fish. Uh, this is Thamnophis Sertalis similis. These are the Florida blue stripes. This is a Dixie County locality male. Uh, they're only native to five or six counties, I believe. They vary from a, like a green background to even a black. Um, this is an adult male. This is an orange uh, phase consensus, the organ red spotted. They have a neon yellow dorsal. They have a lot of variation in the subspecies. These guys are popular because they look a lot like the Infernalis, but they're normally a lot calmer. Mine are so inquisitive and yeah. like friendly. You know, most garters, whenever I go in the snake room, they're up on the front glass or wanting to eat. Uh, mm. This is one of the few animals that I go in, I open up the enclosure, he'll climb into my hands. You know, you can tell they're generally curious. They're just trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, they're definitely intelligent snakes. Really eating pickled garlic? Dude, try it. No. It's delicious. Try it. That's, try that it, try smells it, like it. my underwear after a week in the jungle. <laughs> to uh, avoid getting sued, you know. <laughs> Originally, my logo was literally just a Pac-Man head with a snake tongue. I designed the logo myself, all this, and then I had a guy redo the snake head. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. So I'm here with Philip at Pac. Rex, and he's going to show us his amazingly innovative and super resourceful pack Rex. This is the Alpha 6.4. The system sold level by level, so you can get as little or as much as you need. Main feature of the system is the fact that all the tubs are interchangeable. So you can take any tub off of this frame without having to move any of the tubs around it. Just pop the tub off and the hanging portion. You can use it as a lid. You have a spot where you can even put a padlock or a zip tie and secure it for transport. All of the parts on here are very easy to rearrange and if you take off more than one of these you'll have room for a wider hanger and a wider tub this system will have around 15 different tub sizes that you'll be able to interchange without having to do any modifications to the frame one system that can hold different species you can have different heat panels for each level so you can have different temperatures throughout the system we'll have different widths and different depths so you can keep arboreal species potentially have uvb the idea is that this system would hold anything up to 105 degrees. Yeah, lots of versatility. Simple, you can order one level, you can order 10. It accommodates a broad range of users, so from your hobbyists all the way up to your big breeders. So if you want to have a larger enclosure, like you said, in the future, you can add in yep, the tub that exactly. size. Exactly, if you work with Venomous, you can actually take an extra hanger, put it backwards on the frame, slide the tub straight from one to the other without ever opening the enclosure. <laughs> Hopefully that's gonna end up in labs and different facilities, and that could potentially save people's lives, you know, who are having to handle these very dangerous animals. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Kalia. What the heck? Hi, going to be bad How did you get up there? <sighs> that was terrible. Ma'am, you're not supposed to be up here. Oh, okay, bye. What are you doing up here, Dave? I am doing drone shots without a drone. I don't know how you guys got up here, but I jumped up here. Hi. Are you going? Cool. How's it going? Do you have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? 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 Whip it. <laughs> 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 Who's this little friend? Um, he's a friend that didn't get sold at the auction, so he's mine now. He's yours. What's yes. his name going to be? I don't know yet, but he's very clingy. He's hypo kitchen sink. It's a whole lot of jeans here, but he's a male, and he likes to hang out. He's a very inquisitive little guy. 
This is Potato. She's expected to be around 50 years old, and they know she's at least 30 because they've had her since the 90s. She's Potato. This is a wild-caught gargoyle. That is just so cool. She's one of the pioneers of her species in captivity. What a special girl. True shrimp, yep. Wow. Prawn, you know, it's, it's semantics, but yes, yeah. Yes. Not a lobster. They are apparently very territorial. If you put two males together, they'll basically just dismember each other. Look at that dude. Whoa. Oh my God. That's insane. Look at those claws. Cat, put your fingers in it. Okay. <laughs> How hard can he pinch? I don't know, but really? I'm not interested in finding really? out either. Day. Really? Really? Day. What? That is the weirdest thing ever. That's rude. Oh, well, weird is good. I never knew these yeah. even existed. They're native. They occur in any river that has confluence into an estuary environment because part of their life cycle, the larvae go out into a bay, spend about five days developing, and then go back up into the freshwater river. Five minutes ago, if somebody told me this existed, I would think it was a cryptid. Right? That and is you, cool. And you only find them at night. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. 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 What good, is good, that? Good. Oh, wow. He's like, only deep. Yeah. Can I touch oh, him? Oh. Wow. What is your favorite African country? Uh, ah, ah, too slow! Too slow! Uh, Uganda! Drop in! Oh, uh, sorry guys, I'm a celebrity! <laughs> it's Madagascar, that's my answer. Madagascar. Oh, what? I'm an ugly. What's your favorite? Uh, South. Wait, Africa. Oh, wait. Oh, that. You don't even know oh, the answer to that... your own question? Wait, no, 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 no. Tanzania. That was a good choice, Madagascar. Does that count? Yeah. Does it count? Is that it count? Part of Africa. We learn something new every day. <laughs> Comment below. What is your favorite African species? This is good for engagement analytics. Asking questions. Asking questions. Like, comment, subscribe, and leave a comment of your favorite African lizard. That's not a question. That's a demand. Well, thank you. YouTubers are in demand. <laughs>